so that's what the management team requested. A way to make our VPNs more secure for the remote workforce. Any ideas? Our network security provider, WatchGuard, has something called AuthPoint, which provides multi-factor authentication. That might be just what we need. I'll dig into it and see if it's compatible with our VPNs. That sounds great. Thanks for taking on this project, Barry. Looks like they have a video tutorial about AuthPoint and mobile VPN with IKV2 on their website. I'll watch it and get back to you. In this video, I will demonstrate taking an existing mobile VPN with IKV2 and adding AuthPoint into it so that we can protect the user authentications with MFA. So here in my policy manager, I'll go under the VPN, mobile VPN, and then getting started. As you can see here, I've already configured the IKV2 VPN, and I've also imported my client profile into my Windows computer and can confirm that the VPN currently works successfully. If we take a look at the settings, we can see that I've added a domain name which corresponds to the Firebox's external IP address, and I'm using the default virtual IP address pool. I'm also simply assigning the network DNS servers from my Firebox. In security, I'm using all of the default settings for both Phase 1 and Phase 2. Under Authentication, I'm simply using the Firebox database along with a local user in the Firebox to perform authentication at the moment but shortly we'll be adding a RADIUS server to provide integration with AuthPoint. Before we can configure the Firebox though, first we need to set up our AuthPoint account. So I'll jump over to WatchGuard Cloud, and then I can come to Configure, and then AuthPoint to reach the AuthPoint settings. The first thing I'll need to do is set up my resources, so I'll come over to my resources here, and I'll add a new RADIUS client resource. After I fill in the settings, I'm ready to proceed. And so I've added my resource name. I've added the IP address of my Firebox in the local network. I'll simply be using my user's auth point groups for the group attribute. And I've included a shared secret that I'll need to add on my Firebox later. Now I'll save this resource. And I'll come over to my groups. I'll need to edit the group I'll be using and add a new access policy for the RADIUS resource that I just created. I will require password authentication. Then you'll note that AuthPoint restricts me to only using either the one-time password or a push in this example. So I'll add that access policy and then save my group. I also need to create a gateway to complete the RADIUS integration. So I'll come down to Gateway, and I'll add a new gateway. After I've filled in the settings, you can see I've added a name for my gateway. I've added the RADIUS client resource I created earlier. And I've defined a port that my gateway will listen to for RADIUS requests. The RADIUS default port is 1812, but in this example I'll be using a non-standard port because we'll also be including an NPS server later in this deployment. So I'll go ahead and save my gateway settings. And now I need to install the gateway. So I'll copy my registration key. And then I'll go to the downloads page and download the gateway installer. Over here on my Windows server, I'll go ahead and take that gateway installer, run it, and provide the registration key that I copied earlier. Now that the gateway has finished installing, I need to make one more change to my Windows server. Here in my Windows firewall rules, I've created a custom rule allowing all UDP 9999 traffic so that my AuthPoint gateway is able to receive RADIUS packets and the Windows firewall does not block them. As an alternative, you can disable the Windows Firewall. With that in place, I'm all set to configure my Firebox to use the AuthPoint Gateway as a RADIUS server. So if I jump back to my Policy Manager, now I can go to Setup, Authentication, and Authentication Servers. And then in my RADIUS servers, I can add a new server to represent my AuthPoint Gateway. We can see that I've set the name of the RADIUS server to AuthPoint. 
I'm directing the firebox to send radius packets to the auth point gateway at 10.0.0.2. I'm using the port that I specified in my auth point gateway settings. And I've also entered the shared secret value that I specified in my radius client resource in auth point. I've also adjusted my timeout values from the defaults so that my firebox will wait 60 seconds and only retry once to match the same timeout values that AuthPoint will use for a push request. Now that that's configured, I can go into my Ike v2 settings again, and under authentication, I can choose AuthPoint as my authentication server and make it the default so that all users will now use AuthPoint to authenticate. If you would like to just test a few users with AuthPoint, you can leave the existing authentication server as the default and simply use AuthPoint as a secondary server. Now that I've added AuthPoint as an authentication server, I also need to add my AuthPoint group so that the users are authorized to use the VPN. So I'll add a new group here for an external server, and I'll enter the same name as the group in AuthPoint. After I've done that, I can see that it's checked so any users that authenticate with that group name will be allowed. After I save this configuration in the Firebox, I should be all set to now start using AuthPoint with my mobile VPN with Ike v2. Now that I have configured AuthPoint, my Gateway, and my WatchGuard Firebox, I'm all set to connect using my AuthPoint user. So I can come back to my computer here with the WatchGuard mobile VPN with Ike v2 installed. I can then connect with a local user in AuthPoint. And after I've entered their credentials, I receive the push on my phone, approve it, and the VPN is able to successfully connect. So this all works great for a local user in AuthPoint, but if you are syncing in LDAP users, you will need to add a Microsoft Network Policy Server or an NPS server into the environment and we'll need to relay those radius requests we're sending from the Firebox to our NPS server first so that it can validate the LDAP credentials for us. So if we jump back to my AuthPoint settings in WatchGuard Cloud, I can take a look at my resources, edit the radius client resource that I created earlier, and now I'll need to check enable MSChap v2 in this resource. A few new fields will pop up, and after I've filled those in, you can see here that I have the IP address where my NPS server will be installed. And this is a Windows server role that you can set up on any Windows server. I've also included the port that the NPS server will be listening on, which is going to be 1812 by default. And I've defined a timeout value of 30 seconds. Now when I save this and check out my group's access policy, I can see now that my radius resource is only allowing push MFA, so I can no longer use the one-time password when I turn on the MSChap v2 support. If we take a look at my external identities, I've already added a LDAP external identity for my local lab LDAP server. You note that this is the same server where both the AuthPoint gateway and the NPS server will be installed. I've also set up a group sync to sync all users from the LDAP group marketing into the training group in AuthPoint that I've been using. And if we take a look at my gateways, we can see that for the gateway I set up earlier, I needed to also add that external identity here to inform it that the users will be synced here. Once that's all set up, I was able to successfully sync an LDAP user into the environment which we can see here as the user Bob. Back on my Windows server, I've set up the NPS or Network Policy Server role by adding the Radius client for the AuthPoint gateway. And this is where I've defined the IP address the AuthPoint gateway is installed on, as well as the same shared secret that I defined in my AuthPoint Radius client resource. I've also created a new network policy for AuthPoint, which as a condition is only applying to any users that are inside of my LDAP group of marketing. 
Under the settings, I've also included an additional radius attribute for filter ID that contains the name of the auth point group that my users are a member of. This filter ID value configured on the NPS server is what will inform the Firebox of the group that the LDAP user is a member of. Now that I've completed the integration with the NPS server, I can connect using the same WatchGuard IkeV2 mobile VPN connection as earlier. And this time I can connect using that LDAP user that I had imported. Once I enter their credentials, I receive the push request, approve it, and I'm able to connect successfully. If you're having any problems getting the VPN integrated with AuthPoint, I would recommend checking the audit logs, which you can find under administration in your account. If you search for authorized or unauthorized, you'll find the successful or unsuccessful logins, respectively. And you can click on these entries to see more information. So here we can see my local user authenticated with a password and push. We can also see where my LDAP user authenticated with LDAP credentials and a push request. And we see some additional diagnostic information that tells us about this request. If there was a problem, it would also inform us of the issue. If you don't see the issue here in the audit logs, you may also need to investigate the auth point gateway logs, the NPS event logs, or the Firebox logs. To summarize, as Barry discovered, we can use AuthPoint MFA to protect our VPNs, which is a great option for our growing remote workforce.